Welcome back to another episode of Smoke Screen Podcast, man. It's your boy 91 Smoke, man. It's your partner Smoke here on this beautiful Saturday evening, man. Listen, you already know, check out Big3RollUp.com and check out the Big 3 Network, dog, for all your content and merchandise needs. Podcast for every day of the week and podcast for every walk of life, man. We got you covered, bro. Listen, man, I got a special episode tonight, man. Very special episode. It's near and dear to my heart. I'm going to tell you why. I had an uncle, right? I got an uncle, right? He passed away a couple years ago, Um, but I had an uncle, my Uncle Kenny. He was about 6'2", 6'3", about 400 pounds, pushing 450 almost probably, right? But he always kept a woman next to him, always kept a lady next to him, right? No matter, he had his got his leg cut off. It seemed like when he got his leg cut off, he doubled his women. And I was like, how the hell does this big dude have women like this? He told me something. He said, Brandon, he said, listen, you going to be a big nigga? You got to understand something. You got to wash your ass, keep your ass clean, and make sure you got some smell good on. Because the first thing people going to say, they smell something, you in the room, oh, it's the fat nigga. I said, damn, this nigga. He told me a lot of other things, you know, but this was one thing that always stuck close to me, right? So I say that, right? And me and I got my partner, Fragrance Journey 01, on today uh, well, on this episode. We recorded this on Memorial Day. Well, actually, Memorial Day that Monday, we recorded this, right? And so I'm just recording the, uh, the intro this Saturday on uh, the next Saturday. But uh, we recorded this episode, and I didn't think about this till after we recorded. Um, And I, as I was getting my intro prepared, I was thinking, I said, damn. We buried, my uncle that I was just talking about, we buried him 2010 Memorial Day weekend. And here it is, 2021 Memorial Day weekend. And I'm recording an episode about colognes, about fragrances. That That's that's love right there, man. So this episode right here is near and dear to my heart, man. We talking colognes, get your smell good right, man. Fellas, get your smell good right. Ladies, get your smell good right for your man. Without further ado, man, here go me and my partner, Fragrance Journey 01. This is a great episode, man. I appreciate y'all for listening. Appreciate y'all for fucking with Smoke Screen Podcast, man. And also appreciate y'all for fucking with Aftermath Podcast as well, dog. Love y'all. And here go the good episode right here. Make sure you spray yourself good before you listen to it, too, man. Just get, just get you a complimentary spray just for listening. Just on me. Just for me. Spray yourself another time, man. Appreciate y'all for listening, man. Here go the episode. All right, y'all. Welcome back, man. So like I told you, I got a special episode today. Father's Day coming up, man. Got to have your dad smelling good. And, and brothers, y'all got to be out here smelling good on that special day for you, man. So I got my partner, man, Rob, man, with uh with Fragrance Journey 101, man. Rob, man, introduce yourself, bro. Yeah, this is Rob. This is Robert, man. Fragrance Journey 01 on YouTube and on, on Instagram. Check your boy out. Yeah, man, Int- introduce yourself, bro, because I've been following, I heard you on the big three um, a couple weeks ago, and uh, and I was like, dang, dog, because, like, I- I'm realizing as as I'm getting older, you got to find that that guy that, you know, like, you got your yard, man, maybe, or you got your dude that might fix your, uh, fix your stuff around the house and stuff, like a maintenance man, but you also got to find the dude that's going to point you to the right direction for uh, fragrances and colognes. And I feel yeah. like uh, I feel like your your page is something that a lot of people should watch, man. Because you don't just do uh, like name brand stuff; you do a lot of stuff that's uh, under the market, and a lot of people might not know about. So, man, introduce yourself, bro. Yeah, well, I just it's just one thing about me, man. I just like being different, so I don't really like riding the wave. I like to smell different, you know. Like I don't want to. Just for instance, I don't want to dress like everybody else, so I don't want to smell like everybody else. So mm-hmm. I just try to. I kind of try to think out the box. And kind of shine a light on a lot of smaller indie niche brands because they don't get a lot of shine, but they put a lot of you know hard work and time into their stuff too. But they ain't got the push like these big brands got. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of the big brands, a lot of their stuff is watered down, and you can just tell over the years fragrances change, um, and they change. You know, they start to use cheaper uh, accords and notes and things of that nature. So I just try to shine a light on smaller indie niche brands and. The smaller, the smaller brands, because they need some shine too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. Uh, so, what what got you into colognes? You know, 
to be honest, bro, my 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 granddaddy and my dad always wore Fahrenheit, like an old OG cologne. And I'm talking about like loud. Yeah. And I just from then on, you know, I'm, my mom used to always give me a couple bottles. But back then, you know, she would just go to like uh Burlington Coke Factory or something like that for Christmas. And you know what I'm saying? I have a little bottle or whatever. So maybe two and a half years ago, I was in the shoes. I've been in the home theater, all kind of crazy stuff, my hobby. So I just one day was watching YouTube and turned on, uh, started watching the Cologne video. And I was like, damn, that looked like something pretty cool. So I just stopped by Macy's. I ran up in Macy's and like grabbed, um, I can't remember, I grabbed like a YSL fragrance or something. And man, two days later, I was back at Macy's getting another one. I, I was back at Macy's a couple of days later. And the next thing I know, man, I just went like full into it, man. Just like crazy. First time I smelled like some niche, I was like, damn, this right here smells good as hell. And then from then on, I just said, you know what? I'm going to get on my phone and start shooting some videos for YouTube. And channel just started growing. People was like vibing, you know what I'm saying? Especially when I really got into like reviewing a lot of indie stuff, different stuff. Yeah. My, you know, people just respected it. They were like, damn, bro, you ain't following that cookie cutter. You know what I'm saying? That, that recipe that everybody, most fragrance people use on YouTube for views and all that. Because, I mean, really, I'm not in, in this to, like, get rich. I, mean, I ain't living off YouTube, you know what I'm saying? But shout out to everybody that's doing that. But I just started doing something different, man, and just going down a rabbit hole is, you know, my own unique way of reviewing and talking about stuff that ain't nobody talking about. And people respect it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro, because, like, I was watching, uh, I know I'm jumping my docky, but uh, I was watching a video you had, uh, it was, like, the last name was Summer Nights or something like that, but, uh, like, it had, a, like, a um, like Arabian-type name to it. Or something. Hmm. I was like, damn, dog, that, 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 that's, like, some of these smaller brands, like, you get, like, I got my colognes right here, like, you get, uh -huh. like, Dolce and Cabana light blue or something like that. Yeah, Our yeah. Prada. All right, yeah, those names, the name Prada sounds good, but some of them smaller brands, like they'll get you with like the fragrance that's in it that I was yeah. watching with your videos. Like, damn, dog, I don't know how that smell, but I know that name smell like it sound like it smell good. Sound like that joint fire. Yeah. yeah, man, it's it's a lot. It's that I just try to encourage people to 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 step outside the box. You know what I'm saying? Check out some different things. And a lot of the fragrances that I speak about that are like in the niche cost less than what you pay for what you're going to go to Macy's and get. You know what I'm saying? You're going to smell unique and you're going to even smell better. And it's going to have, you know, it's going to last long on your skin. The notes are more quality. I just, I don't know, man. It's just, I just like smelling different. Hey, bro, what, what's in the niche mean? In the niche? In the niche means you've got niche brands. So say for instance, you got like a big niche brand like um trying to think of one I could say. I consider like Guerlain or Christian Dior. Mm -hmm. Well, not Christian Dior. You got Christian Mason Dior. I'm trying to think of a big niche brand, a huge niche brand. I would say Roja Dove. I would could say them, but in the niche is somebody that's doing it on their own. You know what I'm saying? They don't have the bagging of no big machine behind them. You know what I'm saying? They're indie perfumers, meaning they're doing it on their own. Like independent, independent artists. Independent, I, yes. I got you. And, and that, that's ba it just, I, basically it is like an independent artist. You know what I'm saying? They ain't yeah. got the push from the machine, you know? Yeah. And so I, they say a lot of people, but most of the time, those Indonesian people, they put their heart and their soul into that perfume. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Every they bottle they money. doing themselves. Yeah, they putting their money into it. You know what I'm saying? Their their time. They ain't going to no big lab or no big lab in a factory and pushing out seven hundred bottles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They bottling, pressing, labeling. They doing all that. So, you know what now, I'm saying? What when you doing like a like a fragrance like that? Like you like an independent person? Do you notice that? Like, say if you bought two of the same uh, bottles, right? at a mm -hmm. time do you notice that one bottle might smell like a tad bit off or are they still keeping that same each bottle smelling the same usually it's each bottle basically smelling the same if it's coming out that same batch uh, you know what i'm saying because yeah. for instance you're gonna get all your notes and your cores you're gonna drop them up 
you're gonna get your your list of the ingredients you use then you're gonna take that batch and you're gonna let that joint maturate so it's gonna sit for a month or two and then you're gonna buy a lot of that batch i'm sure the, the second batch will probably be made it may be a little bit off but it's, it's gonna be pretty much close you know what i'm saying yeah, so some of the scents, like, because I know, like, with wine and stuff, when I used to drink, I used to look at a lot of wine and, like, uh, and, and whiskeys and stuff. Those, uh, because I know they have to age those in barrels sometimes. Mm -hmm. So yep. with colognes, they do the same type thing, like age them. Yeah, they maturate. Yep, you got to sit them up and let them maturate. A lot of times people will do, like, um, what would you call it? They'll take, let's say, for instance, you go outside and you find some kind of herb or something, mm -hmm. and you can make a tincture out of that joint. And then put that in your perfume. So you'll make a tincture. With, I guess you'll use perfumers, alcohol, whatever you're trying to use, whatever herb or spice or yeah. flour or whatever, and let that joint sit up and maturate. And then you can put that in there too. So yeah, it's, it's a maturation process. All right, because I heard you um talking about oud a lot. In your oh, head. yeah, I love it. And uh, I was looking up the definition of oud. Could you explain oud for the listeners? Oud. Yeah, oud is basically agarwood which comes from an agarwood tree. They get the oud from the tree. They inject the, they inject the tree with some kind of bacteria. Mm -hmm. And then they get, they, dis, they get the oud from the tree and then they distill it. But in the distillery process, you can make that oud be kind of smell animalic. You can make it, you know, you can kind of trick it and flip it to how you want it to smell. So basically it's from an agarwood tree and they're very hard to find. Yeah, because like, because, um, I was gonna ask you, bro. Like, I got a science, right? Uh, like I told you, I was in me and Cologne got a long, uh, got a long history, dog. So I got mm -hmm. a science, like, because I know when I looked up the definition for oud and I saw the the uh, agarwood, I noticed mm -hmm. the body washes. They starting to use those a lot in some of the uh, like men body washes. And I was, you know, um, I was wondering, um, do you have like, are you no know, colognes? Like, is there a certain like way you have to match up your body wash with your cologne? Because I think. Like with me, I can't wear uh like a if I'm wearing like a scented body wash, it ain't uh -huh. good to spray no cologne on with me. But if I wear like a soft smelling, if I use a soft smelling body wash, like I know I could put put good some good cologne on. Is there a science with that that you on your side that you think? Ah uh, man, I, I, that's one thing people say. You know, it's a science to this, and mm -hmm. people say, well, this fragrance right here, you should only wear this in this temperature. Man, I. I trick it out however I want to, bro. I wear some oud in the middle of the summertime. You know what I'm saying? It just yeah. depends on it. Just everybody's body chemistry is different, so it's kind of like a thing where it's gonna be different from everybody. I haven't really um, got into too many um, body washes or anything like that, but I'm sure um, you can match them joints up though, and have them doing, you know, have them doing smelling real good. If you got the body wash to match, like you, you got an oud body wash. And then you match that joint with uh, some kind of leather oud by Christian Dior or something. I'm sure yeah. that I'm sure that'd be popular. I ain't got into that though. I, that's something I need to check out. Yeah, hey, that's something I was. I, I've always had a science uh, in my head about that. Like I have to make sure if I'm wearing, if I'm going out, don't wear. If I'm want to spray cologne, don't uh, put no strong body wash because that yeah. body washing that cologne ain't gonna interact really good. Uh, it like uh, what, sense, though. yeah, what what type of sprayer are you? Because I like to spray on my wrist. A little bit then on my neck how, how you spray man i bundle spray bro i go wrist neck clothes my i, I spray at least 12 to 14 times whatever so, i'm putting right. on i'm bundle. Well, what, what we call this bundle spraying we we just go crazy with it. yeah yeah so uh like what if the for the amateur uh cologne enthusiasts like where would they start at and you know, that's another thing I think that's really subjective. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, people, when I first got in the game, people was like, well, you need to start with designers and then move your way up the niche. But once I really got in the game, I'm like, bro, if you smell something you like, it, it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? It could be a design. It could be niche. It could be in the niche. It could be anything. You know what I'm saying? It could be a clone of a fragrance. If it smell good, I just kind of think you just, just, Get some stuff and sample it. I mean, the best thing to do is if you're in a town where it's a boutique or something like that, like mm -hmm. my town, we don't have no boutiques or nothing like that, where you can just go smell some stuff, you know what I'm saying? And your nose is going to lead you in the right direction, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's really, really to me, I think, just go smell some stuff and whatever you like, 
You know what I'm saying? That that's gonna be it. You may it may be somebody that may start off just like a number in the niche, and then it may be some people that just like complement getting designer fragrances. So it's all about what you want, what you wearing your fragrances for. Yeah. So uh, I come in to ask you this too. Like you was talking about um the, the different uh, herbs and stuff you can use. Like I, I saw the uh, the episode you have with patchouli. And uh, mm-hmm. I just got introduced to patchouli. My uh, me and my wife, we like uh, diffuser, diffuser oh, oils. Yeah, like, no, I uh, haven't diffuser. gotten to those either, but I heard they cool. Yeah, man, that patchouli though. I used to love lavender. I got a lavender plant outside of my yard, and uh, yeah. but I, I that when I found out about patchouli, I was like, man, this like the next step up above yeah, lavender a true, little bit. Truly fire. Yeah. Do you have any essential oils or anything that you you said you haven't got into it yet, really? I really haven't gotten into it yet. I do have a vetiver essential oil that smells really good. Um, essential oils are things that I I know people that just wear essential oils. You know what I'm saying? They mm-hmm. won't even wear like perfume or nothing. They'll just get like some patchouli essential oil, and that's what they'll wear. You know what I'm saying? So that's something I haven't gotten into, but I know some people that are really into it. Yeah, we actually brought on from Amazon, uh, like you know, like the roll on uh joints. Yeah, yeah. We put we put some oil in it, and we was just using them for a little bit, just you know, rubbing that citrus oil on our wrists or whatever, especially before night, because you know, like yeah. eucalyptus oil and all that. Yeah. Like, sleep at night, so we was doing that for a little bit. Might start getting back into it, but yeah, because I saw that patchouli. I was like, man, a patchouli based uh cologne that that sounds like legit. Yeah, patchouli is a note uh, that can be done many different ways. It can be just earthy uh, green patchouli. Some people uh, hit it, mix it with lab, uh, labdanum mm-hmm. and uh, tonka bean and, and make it like a sweet patchouli. Man, you can make that joint gourmand, like chocolatey. Patchouli is a, is a note. It's super fine, man. Yeah. Hey, all those bottles that you got in your bag, those all full? Man, yeah. I'm pretty much everything I got behind me. I need to start getting rid of some bottles, man. I got too many bottles, bro. How, how many do you think you got all together? Between two fifty and three hundred. Oh, Between two fifty and three hundred. It's it's really though. I I I definitely been thinking lately. That I need to downsize because I've been just giving away bottles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when I when I when I I'm gonna be down there and see Silk now uh, next month. I'm gonna bring you a bottle or something. Hey, I'm up in Tallahassee here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna bring you a bottle or something. I just. I get enjoyment out of seeing just how pe- how much people get excited from smelling stuff. People that's new to the game, but yeah, I need to definitely get rid of some bottles. Yeah, I got man. too many. I can't spray them all. <laughs> yeah, like I, I get stuck on one, and the next thing I've been trying to, so I like to prepare myself before I do an episode. So the past when we uh set up the interview for the past like week or two, I've been like, all right, B, you, you doing this episode? You don't want to get on the talking about your colognes? You ain't worn it <laughs> in a long time because I be working from home, so I don't really be wearing it like I used to. Uh, so yeah. the past week I've been doing it, man. My wife was like, you know, since you said you was gonna do that episode, I I've been smelling you. Yeah, for like, real. So oh, you've been you you been putting it on. Yeah, bro, I've been man every day though, just spraying a little bit on my wrist. Just spraying no. you, you you get into the lotions too, because I was just looking at my I got the Mont Black Legend Night. Yeah. And uh yeah. I got the lotion here too. And I you get into the lotion too. I haven't got into the lotions either, man. I that's another thing I haven't got into. Um, but again, that's another thing. Some people, but I think most of the time when you get like designer fragrances, when you buy that bundle, like yeah, that's gonna come with some lotion. I because I remember when I was younger, my my mom when she used to give me fragrances, it, it would have like the Fahrenheit lotion, it would have the body wash, it would have like the uh, aftershave and all uh-huh. that. But uh, I haven't gotten into that, but that's another thing you could do with your fragrance, you know what I'm saying? Put that lotion on or whatever, and then bam, hit the fragrance on the top of it. Yeah, so what what countries you think got the best scents? Man, you know, I would have to say I do like a lot of the, I do like the style of perfumery from the Middle East because I like oud and I like darker fragrances, leathers and things of that nature. But it's gonna have to be Paris, France, man, because that's that's where a lot of the master perfumers are from. You know what I'm saying? So I would have to say probably probably Paris, France. That's what I would say. I would think. Yeah. I do like the fragrances that come out the Middle East, though. They super fire. That's where a lot of the oud comes from. 
you ever get one uh, out of like Africa or anywhere? I have not. Um, there is a lady that I want to pick up a fragrance. I can't remember her name, but she is from, she's from Africa, I think. But the fragrance is super expensive, but I definitely want it. It's an oud based fragrance. Yep. I, bet, I bet that probably smells good. But what, what part of Tennessee you out of? Man, I'm in uh, Cordova, Tennessee. A little bit right outside of Memphis. Not far, probably four minutes outside of Memphis. Yeah, I know I this ain't got nothing to do about Cologne, but you you in you like three six or MJG and eight ball. Oh man, eight ball and MJG all day. All right, all right. Man, I'm for, I, I was I grew up on that. I grew up on three six two, but eight ball and MJG was like some of the first people that really put the city. Because I'm from, I mean, I lived in Memphis growing up. They really put the city. You know what I'm saying? They're coming out hard, man. Them boys, I had them boys was hard, man. And I like those, three. I like three six, and I grew up like around the corner from Juicy J. But I just like a ball and MJG, man. Very uh, too underrated, bro. Them and like them and like UGK, like ghosts to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. I was going through their music yesterday. I was like, damn, bro. I think bro from uh, out of Tennessee, dog. I need to ask about this. Yeah, they from the mound. They from Orange Mound. They from right out of Lamar. They they right out of Lamar. Yeah, that boy was cold, man. That's yeah. my that's my favorite from the city. If you talk about anybody, that's them right there. That's Y'all got a lot of that. Meant, a lot of people talk about Atlanta and all, but Memphis got a lot of music that's still coming out of the, like uh what money bag and all of them from. Man, you got you got Dolph, you Dolph, got yeah, Dolph, yeah, Dolph, my you, dude. Yeah, that's my boy. You got uh Gotti, you got yeah. money bag. It's just air. It's just here. Nobody don't. They ain't fooling with each other like that. You know what I'm saying? I noticed that a lot, man. Yeah, ba- uh, paper route with Dolph and Gotti. They just they don't get along, so it kind of got the seat is split. You know what I'm saying? You either got sound with Dolph, or you either got sound with Gotti, or you just do your own thing and just mess with both both of them. But yeah, they, the seat is split. But the seat is hard though. The city, the city hard. A matter of fact, we was thinking about coming. That was one of our places we was thinking about coming up to, uh, cause we like to travel a lot sometimes. Uh, mm-hmm. We went to Colorado in 2019. The virus came, you know, the next year. So we was yeah. actually thinking about Memphis. Uh, actually, I was actually trying to look up hotels and stuff. Yeah, Memphis, Memphis straight, man. The Memphis straight, the Bill Street. I know you probably <laughs> most people come here for Elvis, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but <laughs> I looked at it, yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, most people come here for Elvis, but the city straight, man. I mean, it'd be a cool little getaway or whatever, just for you know, for a little time. It's straight. If you live here, though, you Neverland Ranch. Oh, oh the, Elvis, the Elvis joint. Yeah, yeah. I, my sister, Michael. my sister, when my sister come in town, she live in London. Whenever she come here, they go. They always want to go there. So I've been there before, just going with her. Never on my own, though. You know what I'm saying? It, Never what's this own. estate's called? Uh, I forgot. What name. is it called? I forgot. Uh, I know. It, I know. It's it's on Elvis Presley Boulevard. Boulevard he got a whole yeah. street. Yeah. I guess it's called. I don't know what it's called. I know Ross I got that, that Elvis Presley Boulevard song. Uh, he yeah, he do got that. He yeah. do got that. But uh, I heard you talking about um. You was doing the Kajal Warwick. We're going to get off after this. So I don't want to hold you too long. But I heard you talking about the Kajal Warwick uh, joint. Uh, you brought up the hemp and cannab- cannabis note. Like, are there a lot of colognes with cannabis in it? Man, there's quite a few, man. To be honest, you got, you got like Boys 1920 cannabis. You got, um, I'm trying to think of what other ones you got. Uh, you got Barreto Open Sky. Yeah, cannabis is a note. Hemp is a note also, too, there. They use in, a, in quite a few fragrances. This is more than people would actually actually think. You know what I'm saying? I haven't smelt them all. You know what I'm saying? But I've seen them online and people talk about them. So when Gucci was talking about Kush is my cologne, he was he might have been wearing. <laughs> he might have been. I, I'm trying to think. Do they even got a, a? I'm sure they. Yeah, they do got a. They got a fragrance called Kush per, per, Perfume. Huh. Kush. Yeah, they do. Yeah. It's cannabis, yeah. Show enough, do it. And the co- the name of the company is Kush Perfume. And they just get the tincture, like you said, and just put it. Yeah, in- they, yep. They probably just tincture the the cannabis. They probably make a tincture out the cannabis and then add that cannabis accord or note to the um to the fragrance. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. dope, man. I just not, you know, when we was talking about that, when we was talking pre-show, I started looking it up. I was like, damn, there is a lot of fragrances with 
with cannabis in it. Yeah, man. Know. Yep. But yeah, dog, I ain't want to hold you too long on this Memorial Day weekend, man. I appreciate you for coming on, dog. And I appreciate y'all for checking us out, man. Go ahead. You got any last words, bro? Any final words? Nah, man. I, pre- I appreciate you uh, giving me an opportunity to come on, man. Maybe I can come back on. We could just talk about, just pod, talk about some different stuff. You know what I'm saying? That'd be cool. Yeah, bro. Uh, like, like, real quick before we get, because we're talking about this. I'm going to bring this up. So we're talking about this pre show, too. Um, like uh, you said, you don't try to, uh, you said, uh, you don't try to be like the mainstream, how the mainstream do it. You, uh, yeah. I feel like uh, with, with like how you do it, it's probably um, like people can't, they can't really pay for advertisement like the, uh, what the Indonesian, uh, yeah, yep, they can't yep, really yep. have the advertisement. So what you doing right now, that's pretty big dog. So they can have their advertisement and uh, get out there, man. So I think like the social media and how you doing it, it's really about to blow up like the Lord, the independent artists. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. I have a lot of brands that reach out to me and they like, thanks, you know what I'm saying? We appreciate you even mentioning our fragrances. And that's what I do, you know what I'm saying? I feel like they need shine too, you know what I'm saying? Especially since everybody doing the top 10 compliment getting videos and which they get the views and stuff like that, but it's the same old recycle, washed up fragrances over and over and over again, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to do something a little bit different and, um, I, but again, I'm not doing it for, I'm not doing it for to make a living. You know what I'm saying? I just do it right now for the love. Of, of yeah. the game, so you know what I'm saying? Everybody's got different. Everybody got different agendas, so everybody gonna approach what they doing different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I said, like I told you, man, I feel like it's a group of it's a group of people that's not going. They're not looking for no money out of this. They looking yeah. for putting this out in the uh, in the world, dog. And I like what you're doing. You say you're not trying to get uh really make a check off of it. You just putting it out there in the world. Good energy. Yeah, man. good right. energy. Yeah, that's, yeah, that'll last longer than the um uh, money will. Like you were saying, man, it's like a time capsule. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it's like a time capsule, bro. And all this yeah. uh video and everything changing. Um, like I said, VHS is we don't even use that no more. Um, I got my V eight uh VHS thing uh up under the. Uh, up under my cabinet collecting dust. <laughs> now, all, all the video and stuff changed. We didn't got the YouTube and streaming, but one yeah. thing that hasn't changed is how we record stuff and the voices yeah. that we can hear because we still hear like the old, uh, like in, if you look at history, like the old slave, we hear the slaves uh, talking and giving out how they was doing uh, during them time and what was going on. And I think like recorders and stuff like this, something that's going to be here for a long time and people in the future, they can uh, they can listen back. They might not because you know it, the, what they have the type of video might not be compatible. Yeah, you did. Damn it, that, that's kind of deep. When you when you said that earlier, I was like, damn, that, that makes a lot of sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Make a lot of sense, bro. A lot. Yeah. Well, uh, what you want to um, let you uh, pick a song to end us out, man? You got any? Uh, let me do. Let me get. Let me get Young Dolph, sixteen zips. Man, that that hundred shots, bro. I probably listen to that at least once a month, dog. Man, they used to, that, when I'm in the gym, bro. It's my joint. It's crazy because it really happened, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what, bro. And I and I was looking at the track. You know, when he first came <laughs> out with it, the track list was basically <laughs> telling you hundred shots you still miss. Like, God dang, dog. <laughs> yeah, that's like that's the one thing to make that, that that's gonna make that joint right there classic. Cause that joint, I mean, you really have to, you know really a hundred shots, really sitting in a bulletproof car. That's crazy, man. Yeah, crazy. Hey, uh, Memphis. I think Memphis played tonight. Uh, if I, yeah, I, Memphis played. Play. Memphis played Utah. Memphis played Utah. Yeah. Yeah, they played tonight at nine thirty. I know you. You. I know you've been uh, watching it. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't go to the lag game. Um, I've been a Laker fan ever since I was a little kid. My dad was a Laker fan. But I do root for the Grizzlies though. I think they might be in trouble with Utah. <laughs> yeah, man. That, I, I was watching a the video. They was in the uh, stands. It's just, I, bro. It's just something about that city that, because I, I, I like Zebo when he, I like Zebo when he played. And I oh, know yeah. I was like, bro, Memphis had they got white people listening to three. They know all the three six, all the eight ball. Yeah. yeah. Did you did you see? Try- Bro, Did you see the video that was saying whoop that trick? Yeah, that's what I'm about to say, bro. <laughs> they do that at every game, but it really be lit in the, when they make the playoff. Like the years when they had Mike Conley and yeah. Tony Allen and Zebo and all them. Yeah. Bro, them games used to be 
lit, bro. Whoop that trick. Bro, was like, bro, bro, all of them with the yellow towels whooped out like, oh, yeah. shit, bro. Yeah, the city lit, man. The city lit. That's the, you know, with so much divide and stuff going on, usually sports, like, yeah. that's the one time when people kind of, like, put all that to the side, you know what I'm saying, and come together and just all root for the city, you know what I'm saying? That's all. I was like, bro, it ain't, it's it's like two black people I see in this section. <laughs> with their towels. Crump, man. <laughs> Crump. They put towels on the uh on your seat before the game. They have towels in the playoffs. Like they might have white towels, yellow towels, whatever they do for that day. And you're supposed to wear that same color shirt. It'd be like a white out or a yellow out or whatever like that. It'd be crump, man. City be lit. I ain't gonna lie. When the Grizzly games in the playoff, when the Grizzly in the playoff, the city lit, man. Man, dog. But well, I appreciate you for coming on, bro. I appreciate you, dog. Man, I appreciate you too, bro. It's a, it, it's a pleasure. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all for checking me out on Smoke Screen. Make sure you check out Big Three Roll Up, man. I appreciate y'all.